Hi, my friends. Here we are again with our read aloud book of butterflies and moths part two. So as we read last time, we were learning a lot about butterflies and moths and what is the same about them and what is different. And we were also talking about how the pictures contribute to the text, which we know is how they add to it and how they give us more information. So we're gonna pick up where we left off. We learned more about their life cycle, um, how they had, or how they um, lay eggs in the same way, and how even the caterpillars do a lot of the same thing with um, how they eat lots and they shed their skin. And on this page, we were learning about how they are actually food for lots of other animals. And so it's important for them to try to protect themselves and, um, to be in order to stay safe. Okay, so let's pick up where we left off with the next page. So here is another text box with a photograph and it says, do you know the pupa cannot move to escape predators? Many butterfly chrysalises are well hidden by looking like a dead leaf or piece of bark. Some chrysalises are poisonous and are brightly colored to tell predators that they are not good to eat. This says the pus moth cocoon blends in with tree bark to keep predators from seeing it. Hmm, that's really interesting. When a caterpillar is fully grown, it enters the pupal stage. In this stage, a caterpillar slowly changes into an adult. It appears dead from the outside, but amazing changes are happening inside. The caterpillars of most butterflies enter the stage by sticking their back end onto a twig, leaf, or other object. The last molt leaves a soft pupal skin that hardens into a case called a chrysalis. The caterpillars of many moths go through the pupal stage underground or on, a, or on the ground. Others spin a cocoon to protect themselves. So we remember the stages of a butterfly, so we know it has the egg, then um, last time we talked about the larval stage, which is like the baby one, and as it's a caterpillar, and we talked about how it sheds its skin over and over because it's growing, and then it enters what they're talking about here, which is the pupil stage, where it's going to make this chrysalis, and it's going to be able to change into a butterfly, but in order to do that, it has to go through this stage. And that's where this text box was talking about how it's able to kind of hide itself to protect itself from predators. Just a few hours after the pupal stage begins, different mouth parts, legs, new muscles, and tiny wings begin to form. The change from pupa to adult can take a few weeks. The entire change from egg to larval to pupa and then to adult is called metamorphosis. It's a really big word. Break it down with me. Metamorphosis, okay? So if we were to clap that out, metamorphosis. That's five syllables. That's a big word. And all that means is that it's changing. When it goes through metamorphosis, it goes through a big change. For an animal to go through this little caterpillar and come out looking like this is a big change, which is what metamorphosis is. It's not really the same in humans or other mammals because when we're born, we already look like a human. You know, babies look the same but they're just tiny, right? A caterpillar looks nothing like a butterfly until it goes through these changes, which is the metamorphosis. When the adult is fully formed, it breaks out of the case. Its wings, which are damp and crumpled, must expand, which means to open up, dry and harden before the insect can fly. When the butterfly or moth comes out of its chrysalis, it is adult in size and will not grow anymore. That's pretty interesting. So here are the different stages this photograph is showing us. So if we were to ask, how does this image contribute to the text? How does it add to it? We would definitely wanna talk about how it's literally showing us the different life cycle changes and what it starts out as. Here's the caterpillar or the larva, the chrysalis, or we sometimes call it the pupa, and the butterfly is actually the adult. So any butterfly you ever see, you, have, you would know, well, that is the adult form. Any caterpillar you see, you know that's the baby form. Do you know for most butterflies and moths, life is short. Adults live for two weeks to two months, except for the monarch, which can live from nine to 12 months. So anytime you see a butterfly, I want you to think about how it actually doesn't live for very long. 
which is an interesting fact to know, other than the monarch butterfly, which can live for much longer than other butterflies. This photo shows three stages of metamorphosis. It shows the changes that it's going through. I'm going to read this after. Life as an adult. Adult butterflies and moths come in many shapes, sizes, and colors. Many butterflies are brightly colored, but others are white or light colored, while many moths have dull colors. Some, such as the luna moth, have amazing colors or patterns. Adult butterflies and moths have many enemies. They need to be as careful as caterpillars not to get eaten. Even though adult butterflies and moths can fly, many animals that hunt them, such as birds and bats, can fly too. So what they're saying is it's not even like they can always escape their predators because they can't always fly away. So let's go back to this image. So here we see a beautiful butterfly, This and it says a monarch feeds on a butterfly bush. So this is the monarch butter, butterfly we were talking about. And you know the monarch because it's usually bright orange, and it has these spots around its wings, and it has a very similar pattern just like this. Do you know lantana and butterfly bush are great plants for attracting beautiful butterflies to your garden? If you want to attract moths at night, try smearing mashed banana and honey on a tree trunk. Keep watch with the flashlight. Moths are also very attracted to light too. So a lot of times you can find them, like if you go outside, if you have a light on outside, at nighttime, they'll go towards that light. Adult butterflies and moths, like caterpillars, have many ways to hide to stay safe from predators. Some have patterns on their wings that help them to blend in with nature. Many patterns look exactly like leaves or flowers. Other butterflies and moths have bright patterns on their wings, such as spots that look like eyes, to scare away enemies. Some, such as the monarch butterfly, are brightly colored to warn predators that they taste bad. So this is Spotlight on Buckeye Butterfly. Their wingspan is 4.2 to 7 centimeters, which in inches would be 1.7 to 2.8. So that's pretty small. And here the wingspan member goes from one tip, the longest, to the other side. The range is where they live, North America, from southern Canada to southern Mexico. So you can find them all up and down America. And the appearance. The wings of the buckeye butterfly have large eye spots of black, blue, and yellow. The eye spots look like the eyes of a large animal. A predator may be scared when the buckeye shakes its wings and flashes its eye spots. This may give the butterfly an extra second or two to fly away before being eaten. So you'll notice here, that's what we're talking about, the spots. That's why they're called buckeye, because they have these eyes here. And from afar, the predators might think it's a larger animal because it looks like it has these eyes like on a face. So that's a pretty cool way that it protects itself. Spotlight on Luna Moth. Wingspan, 7.5 to 11.3 centimeter, centimeters, which is three to 4.4 inches. So from tip to tip, that's what it means. Range, Eastern and Plains areas of the United States and Canada. Appearance, the Luna Moth has beautiful pastel green wings. Pastel means that very light, like fair color. It's not a bright color um, with reddish brown edges. The unusual shape of its hind wings help it to hide among leaves while it's resting. This is one of the few moths that never eat as an adult. It eats enough to last a lifetime while it's a caterpillar. It spends its adult life seeking a mate and laying eggs. So that's pretty interesting. So saying the shape of its wings here, if you notice, it really does just look like a leaf. It looks like it's just a leaf sitting there on a tree. And that's how it's able to protect itself. Also really interesting that it never eats as an adult. Once it comes out of its chrysalis or its pupa, it's saying it never eats again because it's eaten all it needs while it was a caterpillar. That's pretty crazy. Most adult butterflies and moths feed on nectar, a sweet liquid from flowers. They suck up nectar using their mouth parts, which look like a hollow tube and work like a straw that curls up when not in use. Butterflies and moths do not have jaws or teeth, and they do not eat solid food, so only this nectar, which is liquid. And this mouth part is actually called a proboscis, and it opens up straight, and it's able to suck like a straw right out of the flower. Butterflies have a good sense of sight, but a poor sense of smell. The flowers they eat from are brightly colored, Flowers often grow in groups that provide butterflies with a place to land. Butterflies often walk around flower groups, sucking nectar from each blossom with their mouth part. Because most moths are active at night, 
Most of the flowers they eat from are light colored to be seen in moonlight. These flowers often give off a sweet smell to attract them. Because moths often hover rather than land, hover means they float above it. The flower's petals are shaped to allow for easy eating. Butterflies and moths have sense organs in their antenna, mouth parts, legs, feet, and other parts of their bodies. These sense organs help them find food, mates, and plants on which to lay eggs. So they're able to use their other senses since they don't have a good sense of smell. And here in the photographs, it says flowers pollinated by butterflies and moths often have very different shapes. So remember it said the shapes here allow for the moth to kind of float over top of it instead of having to land. Some butterflies and moths that live in cold places migrate to warmer places before winter begins. The best known butterfly that migrates is the monarch butterfly. Monarchs in North America begin their journey south when it begins to cool off in late summer or fall. Monarchs living west of the Rocky Mountains fly to several places on the California coast. Monarchs living east of the Rockies fly as far as 4,800 kilometers, which is the same as 2,982 miles, to Mexico. So they fly almost 3,000 miles from the north all the way to Mexico. When they reach warmer places, millions of them rest in trees through the winter. In spring, they migrate north again in search of plants on which to lay their eggs. No one knows how monarchs find their way. So in the images, we have monarchs resting. So here I told you they have the beautiful orange coloring. And here's a map showing of their migration. Migration means how they move. So here's how they fly from all the way north to south. And then they go back once it starts, once springtime comes. Because remember, we learned about earlier in the book that they their wings aren't able to work when they're cold. So they have to stay warm. So when it starts getting too cold in the northern areas, they have to fly south where it's warmer in order to be able to live. Conclusion. Over the years, people have collected butterflies and moths for scientific study and as a hobby. Scientists and others have learned a great deal about these insects from collections. However, millions of these beautiful insects have lost their lives because of collectors. Watching butterflies and moths while they are alive is much kinder and also more interesting. You can learn a great deal about their similarities and differences just by watching them fly and feed. Take pictures of them or catch them in a net for a closer look. Don't touch and then let them go. View photos of your favorite species on the internet or in a book. Build or visit a butterfly garden and keep a journal to record their activities. However you choose to enjoy, enjoy butterflies and moths, remember that they are among nature's most amazing insects. Do you know, do not touch butterflies or moths. The oils on, on human hands can hurt their wings. No matter how gentle you try to be, you are likely to hurt them by breaking a piece of wing or rubbing off some scales. So that's interesting to know. If you ever see a butterfly, don't touch its wings. It's talking about take pictures of them and you can watch them and study them and look them up on the internet, but we wanna protect them so that they're able to live their own life. All right, so we learned a ton about butterflies and moths in this book. Here is the whole glossary if you wanna to pause to read what every um, keyword we learned about means. You can do that. And then here's the continuation and it has the index. Make sure that you go um, back to the assignment and leave a comment with one important fact that you learned. Could be anything about butterflies and moths. It could be something about how they are the same or how they're different, whatever you want. Um, and then go do your exit ticket and I'll see you guys on our next video.